Uh, I welcome you all to the course of control systems. I am Tilak, by the way. Uh, I finished my MTech in 2014 from IIT Roorkee in system and control. It comes under electrical department. It's basically related to control systems. Uh, like there are some other subjects like optimal control, uh, system modeling. Basically all the aspects of control systems are being covered in, in that uh, particular specialization. Now after my uh, graduation, from IIT Roorkee, I have joined Gate Academy and I have been in Gate, Gate Academy for over one year. Now, uh, control system is obviously my favorite subject. In addition to that, I teach some other subjects like network, sun log and fewer. Okay, now. Now, regarding Gate exam. Okay, now, uh, now that you are preparing for Gate exam, I am sure you would know what is the pattern for Gate exam. So, if you see, uh, actually, this uh, Gate exam, has been offline, uh, like two years back or something. Now since the last two years, gate exam has gone online for all the streets, including electrical, electronics, and mechanical, and so on. Now it's an online exam, now it has 65 questions. Okay, out of the 65 questions, there are 31 marks question and 35 to, uh, 35 2 marks question. So uh, the total amounting to 100 marks. Okay, now the types of questions, if you see, like there are both multiple choice question and numerical type question. Now, what is the thing with this numerical question? Now, previously, if you see, like uh, two years back, there were only new, uh, multiple choice question, which means you have to select one among the four options. Now, what has happened? They have uh, they have brought in something called numerical type questions. Now, actually, what is the thing with this numerical question? Is you have to calculate, get the numerical type answer solution, and then enter that. Now here what happens is, when it was only objective type, your problem solving skill, in the sense the kind of approximation that you are using, uh, it was not tested a lot. Now what happens is, you need to use good approximation methods. Okay, you have to be very good at calculations to get the precise answer. Okay, so that way if you see, uh, the emphasis that they are putting on problem solving has gone up. So basically there are like multiple choice question and numerical type question with no negative marks. Okay, this numerical type question does not have, does not carry negative marks. But multiple choice question carry negative marks has 33% weightage of the actual positive marks. Okay, now, now that is the uh, like pattern of the exam. Now if you see, this is a weightage for different subjects. Not just subjects, like I can divide all the subjects into three categories. Now what are they? Core subjects, mathematics, and aptitude. Now, if you see aptitude, like accounts for 15 marks every year across all streams, it's 15 marks. That's fixed. And uh, and trust my words, if you see any gate question, I mean question paper, you will see, you will find that uh, these 15 marks are very very easy to score. Out of this 15, it's very very easy to get like 13 or 14 also. Most of the people do score them. So what I'm saying is, if you are really preparing for gate, in the sense if you are going for a good rank, then you should be scoring at least 13 or 14, failing which you are actually not doing a good job. Other than that, aptitude, there is mathematics, which is very important. Way more important than any core subject. And I think you have finished mathematics. So I strongly recommend you uh, to try and finish the subject. Because what is the thing with mathematics is, whatever you have learned in mathematics is very useful for other subjects. Like for example, you must have studied Laplace. Now Laplace is something which is the most important thing. Now why? Because we are going to use Laplace in control systems. And then again there is Laplace in signal senses. So that, so that way, what happens is, if you are good in mathematics, if you are good in mathematics, then automatically you will do good in aptitude. So there like you are accounting for some 25 marks. And then parts of mathematics do appear in other subjects, like signals, control systems, and so on. So that way, if you are good in mathematics, you can easily score 35 to 40 marks. Okay, so be good in mathematics. Now, apart from these two, there are 70 to 72 marks from the core subjects. Now, if you are looking for a good rank, very good rank, then you have to be very strong in core subjects, in addition to being strong in mathematics also. Okay, now these core subjects, it depends on the stream. Now, I think, uh, like, you are from IE and WE and EC, so you might be having different sets of core subjects, and control systems do come in core subjects only, for all the three streams. Now, if you see uh, the weightage of these core subjects, okay, now the weightage for general aptitude is fixed. For mathematics also, they say it's 15, but it is 13 to 15. But for core subjects, what happens is, if you see that way, it's like 70 to 72. And for individual subjects, there is no weightage. 
For example, one year you may get 5 marks from networks, in the next year you may get 15 marks. But it's not happening, I'm just saying, there is no fixed uh, weightage for each of these cor uh, like core subjects. Okay, but uh, if you see, most of the core subjects will be having a weightage of around 10 marks. And it applies to, uh, it applies to control systems also. You see, control systems is a very simple subject. See, basically I am from electrical. So I can compare it, it with other electrical subjects, like for example, machines, power electronics. If you see, uh, particularly machines, machines is a vast subject when it's compared to control system, right? But if you see the weightage of machines is like around 10 marks only, 10 to 15. And it is coming down over the years. You can just check it. The weightage of machines is coming down. And what about control systems? Now the syllabus of control systems when compared to machines is so less. But its weightage is very good. And why, why is this happening? It's because no matter what specialization you take in your MTech, control systems is going to be very important. When you do a project, okay, now I am from control systems, but I have seen many of my friends from uh, drives, power systems, okay, and instrumentation, do their projects and everyone needs control systems. At some stage you have to use control systems. Okay, so that is why what they are doing is they are increasing the weightage of control systems, which uh, I think we have to be smart there and give more importance to control systems. And moreover, it's a very simple subject. If you go and ask anyone who has done very well in game, they will definitely say control systems was one of their scoring subjects. Okay, now, so if you look at the year-wise weightage for control systems, you can see it's around 10 marks. See, in the last 2015, it's like 11 marks. 2014, it's 8 marks. It's, it's like around 10 marks. Okay. But I'm, I, I, I feel that the weightage will go a little over 10 and it will continue to stay over 10 for the years to come. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, anyway, see, I don't need to say, uh, I don't need to sell the subject, do I? See, you have to, although this is gate, I mean, you are preparing for gate, I would strongly suggest you to learn the subject, particularly at this stage, when you are like one year from gate exam to Learn the subject for the love of it. See, control systems is a very beautiful subject. And with control systems, you can do a lot of things, and which we will see. You can easily design a controller, and you can learn to design a controller in a matter of two or three days. And the number of things you can do once you learn how to design a controller is a lot. Okay, that is why. So, learn the subject uh, in the right way. I mean, just learn it because you have to... But just learn it because you like the subject. Okay, uh, and then, okay, then that is regarding uh, control systems. So we will see more about control systems before going into the subject. What I need to know is we have to fix which books we need to follow, right? Now, what are the books we should be following? If you see, like we cannot have a strong recommend. Like we cannot, I cannot say you have to use Ogata. But if you ask me which one I should be using, I would just suggest these books. I have given them in the order of my preference, okay, you can right away use Benjamin Coas, I don't have a problem with that, but as long as you are using any one of these four subjects, I am completely fine with that, okay, now, first, Modern Control Systems by Katsuhiko Ogata, now this is the best book for control systems, I can easily say that, okay, now it's it's not, I would not think it's the simplest of all the books, see, but <laughs> it is the best book, the way the subject has been treated by this guy, it's very, very good. Okay, so if you have to get a book for control systems, then I think you need to. Because you are planning to do your MTech, you have to get a book for control systems. Okay, so get Ogata. Okay, now what about this design of feedback systems by Stephanie Savant and Hotstetter? Now this book is also very good. Now this book is very, very simple when compared to Ogata. And then in control system, we will see there are two approaches. One is transfer function and one is state space. Now for state space, for stage space, I would strongly suggest you to use design of feedback systems. It is it is treated in a better way than what is treated in Ogata. So one book I will say Ogata, but if you want to learn stage space in a very good way, then go for uh, Hostetter. And then automatic control systems by Benjamin Gua. This book is also good. It's like an alter. I can say it's an alternate for uh, Ogata. These two books are equally good, but uh, like from student's point of view, but when, when I was a student or when I was doing my MTech, I always found this book to be good. And I would want you to get this book. Okay? Because no matter what notes you make, and making notes is very important, anyway, 
you have to have the habit of studying from standard books. That is when your concept will be very good. Okay. And then finally, Nagarat and Gopal. This book is okay. I would say this book is okay only. It's not very good. So, if this is my first preference, second, and then third. Okay, now among these books which is simple is uh, Design of Feedback Systems by Hostetter. Okay, anyway, now uh, getting to the contents. Now, I am not going to spend a lot of time in detailing you what, what are the things we are going to study. Okay, because we will study them and you will understand why we are studying them. So that is more important. See, what we are studying is not the thing that we have to see. Why we are studying, that is more important. Okay, just for the sake of it, I will say, first we are going to study basics of control systems, then we will go to time domain analysis, root hurricanes, then afterwards we will go for root locus. Okay, and these two are very related. And then we will go to an entirely new domain, frequency domain. And then we will go to state variable analysis. Okay, now it's like, we have taken a completely different way of doing things. Okay? And then finally we will see compensators and controllers. Okay, now the things that are supposed to be said as formality, I have just finished. Now we will get to the real subject. We will just see what control system is. Okay, now first, before we start, we have to understand what is control system, what we are doing here, why we are studying control system. That is the thing we have to understand first. Okay, now to make you understand what is control systems, what we are doing here, I am going to take a very simple example. And what is that example? Okay, it's an example of an helicopter altitude control system. Okay, now this helicopter is also, see, what is a control system? Before that, what is a control system or what is a system in fact? What can I call a system or what I cannot call a system? It's very simple. Now if you ask me, I, will, I can call anything as a system, but for that it needs to satisfy only one condition. And what is that? It has to generate a response, it has to generate an output when I am subjecting some input. For example, if I say, if there is a rock, if I just push it, it will move, there is some displacement. That displacement, I will say, is the output or the response. And the force that I am applying, I can call it as input. So if there is anything that is generating an output for the input, then I will call it as a system. Then you might wonder, then what is not a system? Okay, then everything is a system. For everything, if I give some input, it is going to generate an output. So what I cannot call as a system? It's very simple. Like for example, just consider there is a wall, huge wall. You are going to apply some force over. Then what will happen? It is not going to move. So that I will not call as a system because that is that does not interest me. Okay, I cannot study that. Okay, that is why anything which is going to generate an output when I give some input, when I give some excitation, when it is generating some response, then I will call that as a system. So now we all know what is a system. Everything that is generating a response, when it is subjected to some input, is called a system. Now what is control system? What are we doing here? Now I will say first, before saying what is a control system, we just now understood what is a system, right? Now, so obviously this helicopter, I will say, is a complicated system. Okay, it is not one which I can discuss in this class right now. But I can use it as an example. I will take a part of that. I will take the altitude control part. Now what is this altitude control part? See this helicopter, it is going to fly. It is going to fly at some altitude. Okay, now what I am doing is, I am only interested in its altitude. I'm not interested in which way it is going. I am only interested in its altitude. How high it is flying, that is the only thing I am concerned about. That is the only thing I am going to concentrate. Okay, so that way if, you, if we study the altitude control system of a helicopter, and then we will use this example to understand what is a control system. Okay, now first, what is the thing here? So any helicopter or any aeroplane or anything, it flies and it has to fly at an altitude. Okay, now it flies. Now it has to fly at some altitude, right? Now for example, uh, I want this helicopter uh, to be flown. I want to fly it at an altitude of 800 feet. What I want to do? I want to fly this al uh, helicopter, but at what altitude? Say 800 feet. Okay, so what will happen, let us just detail out the procedure or the steps that happen here. Okay, now what is the first thing that will happen? This helicopter will have a cockpit. Now what is a cockpit? We all know what is a cockpit, right? What is a cockpit? Cockpit is a cabin in which the pilot is sitting, right? Now in the cockpit we have a pilot, okay, this smart guy. Now what he does, he is going to control the helicopter. Now what he will do, he knows that he wants to fly the helicopter at an altitude of 800 feet. 
Okay. Now what we will what he will do? He will give some input. Right? What he will give? He will give some input. Because what he wants is to make it fly at an altitude of 800 feet. Now what is the input that he will give? Just try to understand, just try to find out what is the input that he will give. Come on, what is it? What is the input that he will give? The input that he will give has to communicate, it has to tell the helicopter, it has to inform the helicopter that it has to fly at an altitude of 800 feet, right? See, the helicopter needs to know, we need to inform it about what is our requirement. I want to fly the helicopter at an altitude of 800 feet. So, I need to inform the helicopter that it has to fly at an altitude of 800 feet. So, what I will do, I will give the input. What I will do, I will give the input. And what is that input? That input is the one which informs the helicopter that it has to fly at an altitude of 800 feet. So, what is the thing that you can observe here? What is the thing we can understand here? The thing that you have to understand here is, any system will have an input. And what is this input? Now, what is this 800 feet? That is the input which we are giving. What is this? This is the desired value of the output. Now, what is the output that I am expecting from the system? What is my system? My system is a helicopter. And what am I expecting from it? I want it to fly at an altitude of 800 feet, which means the output of the system is altitude. First thing. And then what is the desired output? What is the output I want it to generate? What is the altitude I want it to fly? Is 800 feet, which means the desired output is going to be your input. So that is the first thing you do, you have to understand. Okay, in any control system there is an input. And what is that input? It is the output that you are expecting. It is the output that the system has to generate. It is the output you want from the system. 